So in game one against the Houston Rockets, James Harden definitely gave his all, as you would expect from the bearded one. But as you would also expect, the Rockets are an eighth seed for a reason. And so, even though James, meaning the guy was looking like a ballerina going into the paint, they just couldn't handle the juice because it's James Harden on an island. And when I say the juice, I mean the Klay Thompson effect of us just being way too frickin' good at the game of basketball on top of our defense and the fact that we just have a god-tier set of role players at this point. And you can also throw Gallinari into the mix because with Klay Thompson here, his the impact he makes is just crazy now. We destroyed them in game one and... Well, the rest of the series really wasn't worth looking at either. I'll be surprised if they won, if, if we even had one game that was even close. So in the second round, we got the Clips, a team that we have seen before. And, um, of course, there's Chris Paul, which uh, the Moody cp 3 matchup could be interesting. Chris Paul can get pretty mad sometimes. It's always fun to look at. Blake Griffin, although the way he plays in 2K, he'll probably score like five points the entire series because that's just how it goes. Our good buddy, Brooke Lopez, because DeAndre always gets traded from the Clippers. Uh, one interesting addition is J.R. Smith, because, um, I don't know, the Clippers always need some shooting. Perhaps he can be the guy. And if we look at the roster, one thing you notice is CP3 has actually declined to an 84, which makes sense. We're a few years into this. Uh, Bobby Portis is interesting. You want to know their starting three? Mr. Dorian Finney-Smith, who has a 56 three-point shot, which means he's getting the Michael Kidd Gilchrist treatment. I'm not defending him at all. It's going to be four on five the entire series, so dock the GM. You're going to have to make some adjustments quickly because uh, it's going to be five defenders on four offensive players. That's usually not the way you want it. Clay Thompson trying to defend Chris Paul, and I got to admit, this shot right here, it kind of makes no sense given that it's like a long two-pointer falling down, but hey, you know what? If the CPU wants to make a shot, they're going to do it. But I also ask them, can you defend Moutier? Because besides like Kawhi Leonard, not many have been able to do it up to this point. Shout out to JJ Redick for still being in the league. And if somebody wants to tell me why the Chicago Bulls traded away Bobby Portis, I would love to know. Why is he a member of the Clippers? And uh, Chris Paul. You know, for like five years, Chris Paul shot nothing but elbow jumpers, but everybody figured it out. So now he's got to do something else. Gallo for three. And you can already see that the wheels are starting to ramp up because um, with the acquisition of Klay Thompson, we kind of got a little bit of Golden State in us where out of nowhere, we'll just go on some stupid run. And um, it's official. Moutier forgot how to dunk. And uh, it's weird because the guy dunked all the time at the beginning of this series. I didn't change any tendencies or anything like that. So I don't know. I think Bobby Portis just made that shot when he should be making it for the Chicago Bulls. But... Is whatever. Moutier's cold for reasons that I can't tell you because I'm pretty sure he hasn't missed a shot in this game yet. And um, the Moutier Gallinari pick and roll, which no one has been able to defend, they still kind of don't do it. I mean, their center was off in the corner defending Joffrey Laverne. Why was he doing that? Do I have to jack up the CPU's defensive awareness because I don't know what the hell y'all doing? And now my buddy Finney Smith, not defending him at all, and. And that actually almost backfired on me because he was willing to drive inside, but luckily he missed. And uh, Gallo, you were like a step outside there, my friend. And oh, okay, this is awkward. Is that the first shot I missed the whole game? I'm so used to Gallinari just dropping it in with his goofy face at this point. It's surprising when he actually misses. And um, you'll see the effect of having a small forward who can't shoot threes because I didn't defend him and then I was able to block the shot. Gallinari just missed a three-pointer, and he played defense. Who, who is this guy? Okay, that's more like it. That's the Gallinari I know. Just getting open, not having to dribble the ball. The easiest role in the NBA, to be honest with you. Shout out to Chris Paul for um, keeping them in the game. Can I say that? J.R. Smith misses that three. You know, J.R., it's not surprising you missed that one because he was open, because, of course, J.R. Smith has the fantastic quote of saying, he doesn't like taking open shots. He likes them when they're contested. Listen, I don't know, man. And so now with a 20-point lead, I'm already beginning to ask myself, is the rest of this game worth it? Are the Clips going to do anything that's going to show me I should continue this game? Well, when you're going to leave Clay Thompson that open, I screwed the release up and then some, but it didn't matter. All right. I'm done here, okay? Y'all wasted my time. I'm not about to play this whole second half. Another blowout. 
But you know what? Let's give the Clips another shot. Game two. It's only a four-point game into the third quarter. Chris Paul is looking a little more jumpy. Perhaps he's actually willing to drive inside, even though he drove inside in the last game as well. But whatever, the joke still stands. It's two points. Maybe they're going to actually make me take them seriously this time. And usually that shot would not drop a moving three-pointer, which I just love the 2K has added that into the game when you want to take a normal jump shot. I got the ball somehow, and though I wasn't playing any defense, Moutier once again doesn't dunk. Isn't it crazy that Derrick Rose had his first dunk of the season yesterday? That's just that's just what I thought of when I'm talking about Moody not dunking. Anyway, J.R. Smith with the first two-point attempt in about four seasons for him, so congratulations. Six points. The score is stupid high at this point. And, um, well, Moody said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make y'all relax right now. You're starting to get a little confident. The game's close. I can't allow that. Ten points into uh, the fourth quarter. Can we just win this game so I can move on to the conference finals in the series? I'm not trying to play these guys for like four more games. Pierre Jackson on Chris Paul, that's usually a really dumb idea. And, well, with that Larry Bird shot from CP3, maybe I should put Moutier back in the game. Now, let me tell y'all, this shot that I'm about to take with Thon Maker, this is not a good shot by any stretch. You know when you just attempt something in 2K and you're like, I know this isn't going, that's what that was. But it's okay, don't worry about it. Because the way this game's been going, I just have the feeling, no matter what the Clippers do, we should be okay. I have to imagine, right? This is a weird as hell offensive possession they got going on right now, and Blake just dunked on us. Well, it's five points. Don't worry about it, it's cool. Or is it cool? Maybe, maybe I'm about to pull a Clippers on the Clippers and blow some crazy lead and then we lose the series. Or Thon Maker can just hit a weird jump shot. Seven point game. The Clippers definitely gave more of an effort here in Game 2. Um, but, you know, let, let, let's see. Maybe they'll... Okay, never mind. Doc the GM just drew up a... Well, Doc the coach just drew up a mid-range jumper for Blake Griffin. So, in other words, the sky is blue. And then this shot from Klay Thompson really shouldn't have gone in because I didn't do anything to get open. But luckily, I got gifted with a little spin move. And so, we're up 2-0 on the uh, LA Clippers. And um, we'll see how the rest of this series goes, but I'm pretty damn sure I'm just going to skip it so we can get to the conference finals. But who knows, Thonmaker has turned into an offensive juggernaut, so that's cool.